It all began in Qatar, a small state deep in the heart of the Arabian Gulf. In May 2005, the state was 17 months away from hosting the largest sporting event ever to be held in the region, the Doha Asian Games 2006. A tender to construct a towering symbol of peace, hope and prosperity for this historic nation was awarded to a consortium between construction giants Midmac and Six Construct. For sheer size, imagination and symbolism, it would be a structure like no other. A wall of steel mesh would surround a reinforced concrete core and perched 300 metres on top would be a 13 metre high flame which would be lit for the duration of the Asian Games. Tens of thousands of LEDs would adorn its outer skin and illuminate the stunning monument from almost every vantage point in the city. The Aspire Tower would also need to house a hotel, a sports museum and a revolving restaurant. In May 2005, this was all just a concept, an idea of architect Hardy Siman, and it was only 17 months away to the lighting of the torch. I was approached uh, by uh, His Highness Sheikh Jassim to uh, do a design for him for the Tower of uh, the Flame uh, for the Asian Games, and uh, basically uh, uh, that's how it started. His Highness was very uh, visionary in his uh, um, uh, idea of what he wanted for the tower. He was very specific of, uh, uh, of it symbolizing a, uh, a flame. Unusual for a project of this scope, the entire responsibility for structural design, engineering, exterior and interior design, as well as the construction of the tower, would fall to the joint venture. The Midmax 6 Construct Joint Venture started with the concept sketch. The first of two milestones consisting of the construction of the tower, all external illumination and the lighting of the flame was the target. We started working very hard in both fronts on the design and the construction. The drawing went from the drawing table to the site construction team immediately. With the clock ticking, the stage was set for one of the region's greatest engineering challenges. With no time to waste, the joint venture crew quickly swung into action. And while excavation work began on the sites, French engineering and architecture firm Arep Management were appointed as the architects to the project. I do realize many things that we had felt during all the studies. You know, for instance, one of the characteristics of this building is that it's not a building. It's a sculpture, it's a structure, it's a, everywhere you are in this building, you are very, very close to to big scale structural elements which gives you a, a very specific feeling that you really don't have in a classical building. In conjunction to Arep, the project also needed structural and engineering design and this contract was awarded to global design firm Arup. The right team was now in place and the race to finish the project began in earnest. Within weeks the drilling of 78 concrete piles on which the foundations rest began. Each of these 1.2 meter circular piles was set in holes some 30 meters deep and work continued on these 24 hours a day, seven days a week until the foundations were ready to be laid in August. Given the time pressures, there was no room for error. You, you have to be right all the time. You have to call, sh to, to call the shot one time and you only had one chance to do it. If there is a difficulty to discuss with everybody and to explain that we have to find a conclusion. We find always a conclusion. Concrete was then cast inside the piles for reinforcement until the site was ready for the foundations, some 30 metres in diameter and 7.5 metres deep. The biggest challenge here is the uniqueness of the structure because you have a core with concrete, then you have steel, and at the top you see the big steel structure which is from the top it's going up 60 meter high and there is no standard way of constructing these things. So everything you have to develop your own standards to meet the time requirement. So that was a challenge. To avoid delays, newer and faster construction systems were being considered by the joint venture. A little used method called slip form was chosen for the core construction. We have a shuttering down, you make a shuttering where you can put the concrete in. 
So when you put the concrete after a certain time, you start jacking, you start slipping it up. That's what comes the name, the slip form. So what you're doing, you put the concrete inside and when it's uh, hard enough and settled yet, then you're starting uh, pushing the shuttering up. The basic is you put concrete in a box and you push the box up. One drawback was that the vast majority of the construction crew had never worked with this system. It would be a huge test for the team. Another area of the project calling for exceptional means was the cranes. 